Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and keep watching more details. General Hospital Spoilers Tuesday, September 3. Christina's Deadly Mission, Sunny Needs Carly's Help, Jason Saves the Day. General Hospital, GH, Spoilers for Tuesday, September 3 indicates some major plot twists in the land of Port Charles. Fans are still reeling over Friday's show, and what will happen next, so it's time to dive into the drama that fans should expect to see. The GH preview for Tuesday, September 3 has been released, and it's explosive. Fans need to be reminded that it appears the soap's Monday, September 2 show has been preempted due to the Labor Day long weekend. Still from the looks of it, the three-day hiatus will be worth the wait. The GH promo video starts with Harrison Chase, Josh Swickard, seeming a brunette that there's been a shooting. As the woman he's telling can only be seen from behind, it looks as if he's informing Brooklyn Quartermain Chase, Amanda Sutton, but it may also be Lois Cirillo, Rena Sover. As the scenes within the GH preview quickly shift, Drew Quartermain, Cameron Matheson, and Willow Corinthos, Caitlin McMullen, are shown in deep conversation. Drew lovingly tells his niece-in-law, there are times where I wish I met you first. Will they go any further than the kiss shown during Friday's episode? As the GH preview video progresses, a clip of Portia Robinson, Brooke Kerr, and Jordan Ashford, Tanisha Harper, is revealed. Portia questions her friend, can he actually make a winning case for Heather? Portia is likely talking about Rick Lansing, Rick Hurst, and his legal suit to get Heather Weber, Allie Mills, released from her prison sentence. Will Portia allow this to happen? In other GH preview news, Sam McCall, Kelly Monaco, is featured on Tuesday's show as she asks Alexis Davis, Nancy Lee Gron, where do you think she went? Meanwhile, the promo quickly flashes to Christina Corinthos Davis, Kate Mancy, at baby Irene Marie's grave. Christina is hysterically crying in the dark rain while saying, I don't want to live without you. Fans were under the assumption that Christina went to Sonny Corinthos, Morris Bernard, placed during Friday's show to grab a gun and kill John Jagger Cates, Adam J. Harrington. However, does she have something else in mind? Is the gun needed to Unilev herself? After Christina's scene, the GH preview flashes to Michael Corinthos, Chad Dell, in the dark as he yells, I don't want to hear it. Sounds like he stumbled upon his dad at the Q Mansion boathouse, with a very dead FBI agent on his hands. Then again, is there a chance he catches Willow and Drew in the act? Speaking of Sonny, the GH promo for Tuesday's show reveals a scene with him and Carly Spencer, Laura Wright. Next. Both are in the dark when the mob boss tells his ex-wife, I need your help. How handy is Carly at burying a body? And doesn't Sonny have a staff of henchmen for jobs like that? Then again, maybe he's simply looking for an alibi, right? Lastly, Jihee's preview video for Tuesday, September 3 wraps up with Jason Morgan, in the dark, pointing his gun at someone, as he yells, drop the gun. General hospital spoilers imply that Tuesday's show will have plenty of ups and downs, as fans ride a roller coaster of chaos in the land of PC. The morning sun barely peeped through the curtains at the Corinthos penthouse, casting long shadows on the hardwood floors. The tension in the air was palpable, a silent prelude to the storm that was about to break loose. Sonny Corinthos sat at the kitchen table, his coffee untouched, his mind miles away. He stared blankly at the dark liquid, the weight of the world pressing down on his broad shoulders. Carly Corinthos, Ever, the intuitive partner, noticed his unease from across the room. Sonny, what's going on? Carly asked, her voice tinged with concern as she moved closer. You're not yourself today. Sonny looked up, meeting Carly's eyes. It's Christina, he began, his voice heavy with worry. 
She's in over her head again. And this time, I'm afraid she's taken it too far. Carly's heart skipped a beat. Christina had always been a wild card, fiercely independent, and prone to making impulsive decisions. But the fear in Sonny's eyes told Carly this was different. What do you mean? What's she gotten herself into now? Sonny ran a hand through his hair, frustration evident in his every movement. She's taken on a mission, something dangerous. She thinks she can fix things, that she can right the wrongs, but she doesn't know who she's dealing with. Carly's stomach turned. Christina's bravado had led her into dangerous situations before, but Sonny's tone suggested this was beyond anything they'd faced with her. Sonny, you need to tell me everything. What exactly is she planning? Sonny sighed, leaning back in his chair. She's trying to take down one of the most ruthless men in Port Charles. A new player in town, someone who doesn't have any qualms about killing to get what he wants. She thinks if she can gather enough evidence, she can turn him over to the authorities and be a hero. But she's in way over her head. Carly's eyes widened. She's going after someone that dangerous? Sonny, we can't let her do this alone. We need to stop her before it's too late. Sonny nodded, already thinking several steps ahead. That's why I need your help. You've always been able to get through to her when no one else can. She might listen to you if you explain how serious this is. If I try to stop her, she'll just dig her heels in deeper. Carly felt a surge of determination. I'll talk to her, Sonny, but we need to be prepared for the worst. If she's already set her plan in motion, she could be in danger right now. As Sonny and Carly strategized across town, Jason Morgan was already in the thick of things. He'd gotten wind of Christina's reckless plan through one of his informants and was tracking her every move. His instincts told him this was more than just another one of Christina's misguided attempts at proving herself. There was a dark undercurrent to the situation, one that made his blood run cold. Jason's phone buzzed in his pocket. He glanced at the screen, recognizing the number immediately. It was Spinelli, his trusted tech expert and friend. Spinelli, what do you have for me? Jason asked, his voice a low murmur as he navigated through the back streets of Port Charles on his motorcycle. The situation is dire, stone cold, Spinelli replied, his voice crackling with urgency. Christina's phone signal just went dark. The last location I could trace her to was near the docks, but then nothing. It's like she disappeared off the grid. Jason's jaw tightened. The docks were no place for anyone to be alone, especially not someone like Christina, who had a knack for attracting trouble. I'm on my way. Keep trying to find her signal. I'll take care of the rest. Meanwhile, at the docks, Christina was already in way over her head. She clutched her phone in one hand, the other holding a small recorder she'd been using to gather evidence. But the moment she stepped into the shadowy warehouse, she knew she'd made a mistake. The air was thick with the smell of salt water and something more sinister, a metallic tang that set her nerves on edge. She had thought she was prepared, that she could handle whatever came her way. But now, standing in the belly of the beast, she realized just how naive she'd been. The man she was after, the one she thought she could bring down, was more dangerous than she'd ever imagined. Well, 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 a voice drawled from the shadows, sending a shiver down Christina's spine. What do we have here? A little bird who thinks she can fly into the lion's den and live to tell the tale. Christina turned, her heart pounding in her chest. The man stepped into the dim light, his face a mask of cold amusement. He was tall, with a build that spoke of raw power, and his eyes were devoid of any warmth. This was a man who had seen too much, done too much, and had no qualms about adding her to his list of casualties. I'm not afraid of you, Christina said, forcing her voice to remain steady. But inside, she was terrified. The man chuckled, 
a sound that was more menace than mirth. You should be. Because by the time I'm done with you, you'll wish you'd never cross my path. Before Christina could react, he lunged at her, grabbing her arm and twisting it behind her back. The recorder fell to the ground with a clatter, her phone sliding across the concrete floor. Panic surged through her as she struggled against his iron grip, but it was no use. He was too strong. You're going to regret this, he hissed into her ear. But don't worry, sweetheart. I'll make sure your daddy knows exactly what happened to you. Just as Christina thought all hope was lost, the sound of a gun cocking echoed through the warehouse. The man froze, his grip on Christina loosening slightly. She looked up, her breath catching in her throat, as she saw Jason Morgan standing at the entrance, his gun trained on her captor. Let her go. Jason's voice was ice cold, a command that brooked no argument. The man hesitated, clearly weighing his options. But one look at Jason's steely gaze told him there was no way out. He released Christina, shoving her forward as he backed away slowly. Jason didn't lower his weapon, his eyes never leaving the man's face. Leave now, and maybe you'll live to see another day. The man sneered, but he knew better than to push his luck. He turned and disappeared into the shadows, leaving Jason and Christina alone in the warehouse. Christina stumbled forward, her knees weak with relief. Jason, I, I didn't think anyone would come. Jason holstered his gun, his expression softening slightly as he reached out to steady her. You should know by now, Christina, I'm always going to be there when you need me. Christina nodded, tears welling up in her eyes. She had come so close to losing everything, all because she thought she could handle it on her own. But Jason had saved her, just like he always did. Back at the Corinthos penthouse, Sonny's phone rang. He answered it, his heart in his throat as he heard Jason's voice on the other end. She's safe, Sonny. I've got her. Sonny closed his eyes, a wave of relief washing over him. Thank you, Jason. Thank you for saving my daughter. As the night descended on Port Charles, the events of the day left everyone shaken. Christina had learned a harsh lesson about the dangers of underestimating the enemy. And Sonny and Carly were reminded once again of the lengths they would go to protect their family. But in the shadows, the man Christina had crossed was already plotting his next move. This wasn't over. Not by a long shot and the Corinthos family would soon realize that the most dangerous enemy is the one who doesn't play by the rules.